Hello, this is going to be looking at subnetting which is a really fundamental process in networking and it's applied to IP addresses so it, to be able to do this you need to have some understanding of what an IP address is specifically what an IP version 4 address is how they're separated, how they're written out and that sort of thing my previous videos cover this so you can watch those if you're not up to speed but as we go through this topic I want you to know that it's not the easiest process certainly I didn't understand it first try so I don't need to be too discouraged if you don't understand it straight away that's very normal it's also normal to be able to well there are two layers to this topic to my mind the first layer is being able to actually do the maths so carry out this process it's not the most difficult process it's just learning the steps and the deeper layer is actually understanding why we need to do this so why would a network engineer be doing this to their network and that takes a bit more time and certainly it took me more time to understand so hopefully we'll cover both layers now but I want you to not be put off if you don't get it straight away anyway let's begin I don't mean to be <laughs> too negative so subnetting is a process of dividing a network into multiple logical subnetworks so a subnet in subnetting is a shorthand version of subnetwork so we've got a wider network and we're wanting to break this into several parts several different networks within it hopefully you know that an IP address has got two parts it's got the network ID part and it's got a host ID part so the network ID is telling us which network this belongs to and then we're looking at the host ID to see which actual device is it within this network we're trying to get to so when we're looking at subnets we need to divide this further into another part which is can be called the subnet ID so we're sacrificing a bit of our host ID to be able to identify a subnet so now we need to well first of all we're looking at so we've got an IP address and we're looking at the network ID because this is the larger network we're then looking at which actual subnet it is within this network then we're looking at which device it is within this subnet so we're moving left to right to try and identify this single device I've got two arrows here because I'm wanting to break it into two subnets so if we look at this pictorially and with actual numbers if we had two buildings here which belong to the same overall network so they're connected as part of the same network which means they have the same network ID so this is the network ID that is unique for this network and then within these buildings the actual devices will have their own unique IP address because they'll fill in the host ID part with you know their own unique number but all the devices in this network will share the first part of the network ID because they belong to this network. So this is the general network IP address but if we wanted to separate this into two subnets one for each building and we'll talk about why we might want to do that later we have to add in the subnet ID part to the IP addresses. So to be able to get a subnet ID we have to be able to take it out of our host ID part. We can't take out the network ID part because it would become a different network and we want these subnets to be within the larger network. The subnet ID needs to be unique because we need to be able to distinguish between each subnet. So this one is labelled with one, this one labelled with two and then the individual devices will have their own host ID part just added on. To look at this in more detail it's important to take a step back and talk about the two IP addressing schemes so originally IP addresses used the scheme known as class 4 addressing which is where the network and host IDs are a fixed sized so they're predetermined or their size is predetermined by the class they're in so for example it could say that the first two bytes are for the network ID and the last two bytes are for the host ID this is predetermined by this class and there are five classes in this scheme which were labelled A, B, C, D, E and A, B, C were the ones which really told us this size, D and E were undefined in terms of the host and network ID. So this is actually a class B IP address because it's got two for each. Class A had one, so we'd have one byte for the network ID, three bytes for the host ID, and then class C was three bytes for network ID, one byte for host ID. We'll talk about the consequences of that later, but it's important you know that this is not flexible. You get told the size of the prefix and the suffix and this contrasts with what is now used which is classless addressing or more formally it's called classless interdomain routing which is abbreviated to CIDA or CIDA people pronounce it differently but this is where we actually can specify this boundary using what is known as a subnet mask so we don't we have control over where this separation occurs 
whereas before it was just defined by the class that the IP address was in. Just for context, CEDA was introduced in the early 90s, meaning it's been around for over 20 years now. It's not a recent development, it's been here a while. And as I say, it uses this subnet mask to do this division. So a mask, more generally, is some data which is applied in a bitwise operation to some other data with the aim of trying to get rid of some of the data. <laughs> so it's difficult to explain. But we've got an example subnet mask here, which like in like with IP addresses, we can convert to DOS decimal notation to make it slightly easier to read. And a mask, because it's designed to get rid of some data, we separate it out into two groups. So the first group, oops, is meant to be the network identifier. So when we have all ones in a row, this is the network ID. And then all zeros in a row is the host ID. And the number of these ones or zeros gives us the size of the network ID of a host ID. So we've got 10 ones here. So the network ID is going to be 10 bits and the host ID is going to be 22 bits. Because we have 32 in total, we can just subtract the network ID to get the host ID. A network mask has to be of this form, so we can't have a random one midway down. We also can't have zeros coming from the left. We've got to have some ones and then some zeros. We can't intersperse them. They've got to be two distinct groups, otherwise we won't end up with two distinct IDs. Right, so we've got a mask. Let's apply it to an actual IP address and see what happens. So if we're applying it to this one here in green, well, the actual operation here is a bitwise one. As I say, we're looking at two individual bits and we're doing multiplication here so it's bitwise and so one times one is one one times zero is zero zero times zero is zero and well first of all you can see how the IP address is different to the net, net mask because we've got ones and zeros kind of interspersed but we end up with here we end up with just one <laughs> just one one in this entire address so this is one two eight point zero point zero point zero and the purpose of applying a subnet mask to an IP address is to try and get rid of the host ID part. A device like a router does not need to know what the host ID is to be able to route it to the correct network. It only cares about the network ID. So this is what it's trying to do, trying to just get the network ID and trying to get rid of the host ID. Writing for mask out either in binary or in DOS decimal is not ideal because it's quite long and often, well this looks like an IP address even though it's actually a mask. So to distinguish and to make it more concise we can use something called CEDA notation whenever we want to write out a subnet mask. So this is where we write a forward slash next to or at the end of an IP address and then write down the number of bits in the prefix. So here we've got 10 bits in the prefix or the network ID and so we write forward slash 10 to condense this mask into just you know, a smaller version. Because we know an IP version 4 address has got 32 bits in it, we can just subtract this value from 32 to work out the size of the suffix, so it's 22 in this case. And every host, every device in the network needs to have a unique host ID. The network ID is the same because they're in the same network, but every host needs to have a unique last bit of the IP address so we can uniquely uh, identify them. Therefore, the number of devices we can accommodate on a network is derived from the length of the host ID because the longer this is, the more combinations it has and so the more unique addresses can be assigned from it. The shorter this is, the less unique addresses we can get from it. Hopefully you're familiar with the number of combinations in binary being given by 2 to the power x. So that's just the general equation where x is the number of bits you've got available. But actually in this case, the number of devices you can give is 2 to the power x minus 2, where x is the size of the suffix of a host ID. And minus 2 is because of just a property of the internet protocol, because two of these IP addresses are reserved and you can't actually give them out to any particular device. The two reserved IP addresses are the first and last IP addresses, or the lowest and the highest IP addresses, in other words, because the first one is where we have all zeros in the host ID, like we have up here, so if we did this mask, in fact we did it before, so it's this one here which is the uh, network IP address for this IP address where we basically don't care about the host ID, we're just looking at the network ID part. And the last one is where we have all ones in the host ID, so it's the largest possible one. And this is for the broadcast, so this is the broadcast address. So when you're not wanting to send a message to anyone in particular, you're wanting to send it out to everyone, 
you put the broadcast IP address in the packet and everyone will accept it. It goes to everyone, not just one person. Applying this equation to this example then, so I've said here that the suffix is 22 bits, so plug it into the equation, 2 to the power 22 minus 2 gives us almost 4,200,000 combinations, therefore that many hosts. So it's quite a few, this would be massively inappropriate for a house, you know, a, a home network doesn't have that many hosts or even close to it, but an office might, very, a very large office might have that many or that would be a reasonable mask for that. It wouldn't be enough for a country though because it would need to have a much bigger host ID to be able to accommodate a whole country. So it's about balancing this boundary and we can do it using the subnet mask.